Hi, I'm Kevin from Kitronic. In this video, I'm going to explain how the circuit that is used in our white LED torch kit, which you can see here, works. Before we do that, we're going to take a closer look at some of the parts used in the kit, and then we'll go on to the circuit explanation. So these are the parts that are used to form our torch. We have a PCB, a battery, and a matching battery holder, a power switch so that we can turn the torch on and off, the LED, and a resistor. So now we're going to take a look at how all these parts are put together to form the circuit to produce this torch. So this is the white LED that's used in our torch kit. This is a forward voltage of 3.2 volts and a current requirement of around 10 to 20 milliamps. This information can vary for different LEDs and it's all available on our website for the whole range of LEDs we sell. We've got our torch which we've made and now I've drawn out here the circuit that's used within that torch. So as we can see, all the parts that are on the circuit here are represented in the circuit diagram. We have the battery, which sits in the battery holder just here. We have the LED, we have the resistor, which you can see at the back here, and we have the switch, which, which is just here. And the switch closes and completes the circuit when the LED is on and it's open open in the circuit so no current can flow when the circuit is off. So what happens is when we turn it on, current flows out of the battery, round to the LED, through the LED, lighting the LED up, through this resistor, through the switch, and then back to the battery. It's doing this all the time and the LED is lit. Now, you might ask, why do we need a resistor? If you think about a light bulb, you normally just connect it up to the main supply and the light bulb lights. Um, there's a very good reason. If you look here, we've got a 12 volt battery and then the LED itself has something called a, a forward voltage. And you can kind of think of this as the maximum voltage at which the LED will work. Now, the forward voltage for the white LED, which we can see used in the kit here, is actually 3.2 volts. This is much lower than the 12 volt battery supply that we have. If we did apply the 12 volt battery supply directly to the LED with no resistor, the LED itself would be very bright briefly, but then it would become damaged and burnt out. So what we have to do is use a resistor to make sure that we have the correct voltage across that LED and also the right amount of current or power flowing through it so that it stays nice and bright but doesn't become damaged. So how do we actually calculate what value this resistor should be? Now, we know from when we built the circuit that it's actually a 680 ohm resistor, but we can go through the calculations to show how we determine that. And it's actually very simple. We use something called Ohm's law, which is known as voltage equals current times resistance. Now, we know we've got the 3.2 volts across the LED, but where does the rest of the voltage go? Well, it, in effect, it's dropped across that resistor. It's its purpose. So we've got a 12 volt battery, and we have 3.2 volts across the LED here. The remainder across the LED is 12 volts, less than 3.2 volts across the LED. So we know there's 8.8 .8 volts being dropped through that resistor. Now we know for a normal bright white LED, we need the current to be 10 to 20 milliamps. So now we know that we've got that current that we want it to be, so the right amount of power flows, and we know the, the voltage across the resistor we can determine what value that resistor should be to get that all correct. So Ohm's law we can see arranged here. And then V equals I times R, arranging this little triangle is quite useful. So we know that if we're trying to calculate the resistance, we can cover that over, that we need to divide the voltage across that resistor by the required current. So we know we're looking for 10 milliamps, so we're going to divide the 8.8 .8 volts by 10 milliamps to work out what value that resistor should be. So we can see this here, we've got 8.8 .8 volts divided by 10 milliamps. Now we need to put it in volts and amps, so 10 milliamps is 0 0.01 amps. And if we divide 8.8 .8 by 0 0.01 amps, we get 880 ohms, which would be in an ideal world the value of that resistor. But unfortunately, we can't pick resistors of absolutely any value because they're only made in preferred values and they're in ranges. So the nearest resistor to 880 ohms 
that's easily available is 680 ohms. So the nearest resistor is 680 ohms. And that's what we've chosen to use in the circuit. And it's actually a very good choice because it's a slightly lower value than 880 ohms. It means that slightly more current than 10 milliamps flow, f flows through the LED. And that's good because we know that anywhere in 10 to 20 milliamps is ideal. And we know that current flows through the LED because the same current flows consistently through the circuit. So as we know 10 milliamps flows through here, it flows back round and 10, 10 to 20 milliamps will be flowing through the LED, giving it a perfect brightness and also meaning it won't become damaged. For more circuit explanations and other useful tutorials, please visit the Kitronic University section of our website, kitronic.co.uk.